Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. For today's video, I'm going to be talking all about satin syndrome in guinea pigs. Before we get started, I would like to say that I am not a veterinarian or a medical professional and all information that I share in this video is based off my own experience with a guinea pig with satin syndrome as well as my own personal research. If you are concerned that your, your guinea pig may be developing satin syndrome or may be showing symptoms, please speak to a guinea pig savvy vet. It is very important to have an exotic specialist vet in order to diagnose and properly manage this disease. And if you want all of the information that I will be sharing in this video in a written form, to refer to later. I will include a PDF in the description that has written up all of the information that I will be sharing in today's video. And if you're interested in following along with my personal journey as I care for and manage my guinea pig with satin syndrome, you can check out my Instagram at Autumn's Piggies. I share lots of updates there about her health and medical condition. So if you're interested in continuing to see what I personally am doing, you can check out my Instagram. So what is satin syndrome? Satin syndrome is an incurable, debilitating genetic health condition that can develop in guinea pigs with satin fur or those who carry the satin gene. Satin syndrome refers to a variety of health complications that can occur, including issues with the kidneys, bones, heart, parathyroid, and thyroid glands. One of the main conditions associated with satin syndrome is osteodystrophy, a metabolic bone disease that prevents calcium from being properly absorbed into the body. This can lead to weak and brittle bones and teeth that decalcify and develop lesions. Now, not all guinea pigs can develop satin syndrome. Only guinea pigs with satin fur or those who carry the satin gene are at risk of developing this condition. Guinea pigs with satin fur have hollow hair follicles instead of normal ones, which gives their coat a shiny satin appearance. This is most noticeable in direct light or under sunlight. So if you're trying to figure out if your guinea pig has satin fur, it might be best to shine a flashlight on them, take them outside or compare them to your guinea pigs that have a normal type of fur. The gene that causes satin fur is recessive. So even if your guinea pig doesn't display the phenotype of satin fur, they still may carry that recessive gene and be at risk for developing satin syndrome. The satin coat can appear in a variety of breeds and isn't limited to just one type of guinea pig. Abyssinian guinea pigs, American guinea pigs, Silky, Teddy, and many other breeds can have this shiny satin coat. If a guinea pig is going to develop satin syndrome, symptoms usually start occurring between the one and two year mark. However, symptoms can occur earlier or later. In my case, with my guinea pig stardust, symptoms started occurring right at the one and a half year mark. Once satin syndrome develops, it causes a wide variety of symptoms, including dental disease and problems eating solid foods, poor gait and issues with mobility. This could look like something often referred to as bunny hopping, where a guinea pig pushes off both its back legs at once to move and hops instead of walking. It could also look like limping or dragging limbs. This symptom is often due to osteodystrophy, the most common symptom associated with satin syndrome. As mentioned earlier, osteodystrophy is a metabolic bone disease that prevents calcium from being properly absorbed into the body, which leads to weak and brittle bones. This often leads to poor gait. Other symptoms may include weight loss, stiff joints, complications with birthing, lethargy, and a raised leg when walking or laying down. Here's an example of what that raised leg could look like. The leg may not be raised as extremely as in this photo, but may be in a similar position or only hovering slightly above the ground. Symptoms could also include selective feeding, where the guinea pig is very picky about which foods it wants to consume. And finally, another symptom is heightened water consumption. Do these symptoms cause pain? Yes, moving around on brittle bones can be very painful and is the reason that many guinea pigs with satin syndrome are on pain medication for the entire duration of their lives. Personally, my guinea pig stardust shows signs of osteodystrophy and bone deterioration in areas such as her hind legs, her skull, and her jaw. The deterioration in stardust jawbone has caused her to struggle with eating solid foods and she's not able to consume as many solids as a healthy guinea pig would be able to. Therefore, I supplement her diet with lots of critical care and softer veggies. It's not uncommon for guinea pigs with satin syndrome to have to be hand fed. Stardust also bunny hops, struggles with weight loss, and often sits with a raised leg. It's important to note that every single case of satin syndrome is different and the symptoms could vary depending on the guinea pig. However, the most common symptom with satin syndrome is osteodystrophy. So if you think your guinea pig may be satin or may be a carrier of the satin gene, make sure to be on the lookout for issues with gait and mobility. So how would you diagnose a guinea pig with satin syndrome? Unfortunately, satin syndrome is a fairly understudied and poorly understood disease. Even among guinea pig savvy vets, it can be really difficult to find a vet who fully understands satin syndrome and is aware of how to not only diagnose, but also manage the symptoms. When seeking help on how to manage the symptoms or diagnose 
diagnose a guinea pig with satin syndrome, it is extremely important to find a guinea pig savvy vet. A dog and cat vet is not likely at all to even be aware of this disease. And even among vets who practice some small animal exotic medicine, they still might not be aware. So it may be difficult to find a vet who is willing to not only diagnose, but also learn and understand this disease. If you're looking for an experienced exotics vet in your area, I will link a list down in the description made by Scotty's Animals that has lots of good exotics vets. And this can help you find a vet who may be able to diagnose satin syndrome. Since osteodystrophy is the most common symptom and disease associated with satin syndrome, satin syndrome is typically diagnosed through an x-ray. In an x-ray of a guinea pig with satin syndrome, the outer parts of the bones are often blurrier and less defined, meaning there has been deterioration. You can see on the right here, there's an image of a healthy guinea pig bone where the bone is more of a solid white color and there is clear definition between the inner and outer parts. On the left is what a bone of a guinea pig with satin syndrome may look like. And you can see here the bone is not as solid white and there is often little to no definition between the inner and outer parts. So what can be done to treat and manage this condition? Unfortunately, satin syndrome is incurable. From current research, there is no known way to either prevent satin syndrome from occurring or to cure it once symptoms have started to display. The only thing that can be done for guinea pigs with satin syndrome is palliative care. We can try to manage the symptoms as best as possible through medication and other environmental measures. The most common medication given to a guinea pig with satin syndrome is a pain medication. Stardust takes a dose of gabapentin twice daily, but your vet may recommend other kinds of pain medications such as meloxicam. One way to help with the bone thinning caused by osteodystrophy is to provide your guinea pig with vitamin D, which helps the body to absorb more calcium. You can use a UVB bulb or daily sun exposure in order to encourage vitamin D production within your guinea pig's body. If using a UVB bulb, it can be placed over an area of the cage at an appropriate height away from the floor where your guinea pig can choose to lay underneath it. I have my UVB bulb over my hay area and I find Stardust often will choose to lay underneath it compared to other parts of the cage. I have my lamp on for 12 hours a day so that it's close to the rising and setting of the sun as possible. When you provide vitamin D, you should also provide a calcium supplement. Stardust takes her calcium supplement in a liquid form once a day prescribed by her vet. Vitamin D and calcium should always be paired together. Vitamin D helps the body to effectively absorb more calcium, which helps to build and maintain strong bones. So even if you're providing your guinea pig with enough calcium, without vitamin D, their body won't be able to properly absorb that calcium and use it to strengthen their bones. If you are considering any of these options of treatment for your guinea pig with satin syndrome, please consult with a vet. Guinea pigs with satin syndrome are also known to be more sensitive to the phosphorus calcium ratio in their diet. The ideal ratio for guinea pigs is around 1.3 to 1, but up to 1.6 to 1 is also fine. This calcium phosphorus ratio is achieved by the overall guinea pig diet not through any specific foods. And it's most commonly managed by tracking the calcium and phosphorus levels within the veggies you feed your guinea pig. As this is something I am still learning about personally and not something I feel especially knowledgeable on, I will link a resource in the description that talks more in depth about what the calcium phosphorus ratio is, why it's important for your guinea pig's diet and how to properly implement it. As the disease progresses, guinea pigs with satin syndrome may start to have trouble eating due either to jaw or teeth issues. Because of this, owners often have to syringe feed their guinea pigs who have satin syndrome. As mentioned earlier, Sardis diet does contain a large amount of critical care due to the deterioration of her jawbone. She usually gets critical care about three to five times a day and she free feeds from a bowl, but you can also offer with a syringe if needed. If you're concerned about how much critical care you should be feeding your guinea pig, or you're not sure how much they need in order to meet their daily intake, you can ask a vet and they can give you a specific amount of critical care that your guinea pig will need based on their weight in order to maintain health. Owners can also make sure the cage environment is soft and comfortable in order to ease pressure on the brittle bones. You can create cushion in your cage by providing multiple inches of a soft bedding such as Carefresh, or you can layer multiple fleece blankets up to three or four in order to create lots of cushion. Personally, I actually purchased a two inch thick mattress pad that I cut the size and placed inside of Stardust cage in order to provide her with maximum cushion. I made sure to cover my mattress pad with shower liners before placing my fleece on top. While this option does provide lots of cushion for the bones, it also tends to be a little bit more expensive. I spent around $50 on my mattress pad and it covers a 25 square foot cage. Now, do guinea pigs with satin syndrome tend to have a shorter lifespan? Most commonly, yes. However, the individual lifespan of a guinea pig with satin syndrome depends on how severe their illness is. Every satin syndrome case is completely different and symptoms may progress extremely slowly or very rapidly. Some guinea pigs may live for years after the development of symptoms, while others may only live for a few months. 
As always, it's very important to be aware of your guinea pig's quality of life and know when the disease has become too severe and euthanasia must be considered. Now, before we end today's video, I wanted to briefly touch on the ethics of breeding satin guinea pigs. Many breeders breed these guinea pigs for their shiny coat and attractive appearance. However, according to one study, 38% of satins suffer from satin syndrome. This means that for some satins, their appearance comes with an extremely high cost. Some breeders will claim that by continuously breeding satin guinea pigs, they are strengthening the gene and they are able to breed satin guinea pigs that don't suffer from health complications. However, it is my opinion that we need to consider the ethics of breeding an animal solely for appearance. There is no benefits to a guinea pig being satin and it's done solely for visual aesthetics. Instead, being sad and comes with a chance of developing lifelong severe symptoms that often lead to an early and painful death. In Finland and Sweden, the breeding of satin guinea pigs has actually been banned. Some breeders may claim that with the right satin breeding program, they are able to reduce the chances of their guinea pigs developing satin syndrome. However, in my opinion, there just simply isn't enough research out there for this to be effective. Since there's no known way to prevent satin syndrome or to cure it, I find it very difficult to believe that breeders are able to strengthen the gene simply by breeding more satin guinea pigs. In my opinion, there is no point to breeding satins at all. After experiencing personally just how devastating the symptoms of satin syndrome can be, I personally just don't see the point in continuing to breed these types of guinea pigs. Stardust is hardly over two years old and she's already struggling to be able to consume solids. Feel free to discuss your thoughts on the ethics of breeding satin guinea pigs in the comments, but please remember to keep discussion civil. If you're interested in researching more into this topic, I will include in the description lots of links to videos, articles, and medical studies that you can refer to. I will also include all sources for all of the information in this video in the description as well. If you're looking for a place to discuss satin syndrome and speak to other owners, the guinea pig forum does have a page on satin syndrome where owners talk about their personal experiences. And I will also link that in the description. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope you found it helpful. And as always, please feel free to leave any questions down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to see more content about satin syndrome, stardust, and all of my guinea pigs in general. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye.